Hi again, everyone. Meteorologist Rusty Dawkins looking at uh, the potential for, well, a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. It's just kind of, oh, goodness, it, this is going to be a weird storm system because it affects so many different people in different ways. And here's kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, this has the potential to be, this area right here has the potential to be strong to severe as we head through Friday afternoon. And then it pushes up to the north a little bit, so that could be severe. This probably won't be. It's just too close to the cold air. And then as soon as it gets up here, by about 6 p.m., and this is fast. I've had uh, other models that show it waiting till about 8 or 9 o'clock. But once it gets up there, it kind of loses its steam and the severe potential goes away. Now, we could still see an isolated strong storm here like around 8 p.m., but notice this over here you're looking at snowfall. So then, this is this is kind of crazy, this is wild. So you have the, the rain here, but over here, look what's right next to it. That's cold air. What's happening is cold air is rushing in like this and it's changing whatever it runs into, into snow. So watch this. <laughs> Jeez. Poof. From severe weather to snow in like, I mean, what is that, six hours? That's just, I mean, oh. And then it gets pulled off to the north and east. Just incredible. So uh, thanks to everybody that's been following me. Uh, I've been getting a few more and more and more subscribers lately. So I appreciate that. Subscribe if you can. Give this video a like. And if you have any questions, comments uh, below. Uh, that would be fantastic. Here, let's see how much snow we're going to get. Uh, and then we'll talk about the severe weather potential. So stay tuned for the severe weather potential. We'll talk about that towards the end of the video. Uh, but here's what the snowfall has for you. As we head through Friday, it's just kind of this area here. And if you were watching yesterday, you already know this, but this area here has the better chance for just rain. And then up here is all your snowfall. So this has an inch or two in the panhandle less than an inch in north central and northeast Nebraska. Uh, model 1.2, basically the same thing, just less, you're looking at less amounts over here than that other model. So basically if it does snow, less than an inch. So this, this doesn't look like it's a huge snowfall maker, uh, but it's still, it's still snow. Let's look at model number two. Kind of the same thing, just it's doing that. Just about every model is going to have some form of that. Some of it dips down a little further. Some of it dips down, dips up a little, pushes up a little further. Uh, but this one has, you know, you're looking at an inch near Alliance, 1.3 near Gordon, 1.1 near O'Neill. Generally, an inch or less. That's what the, the Model 1 and Model 2 so far have been saying. Almost identical. 2.2 is, uh, again, following that up and down, up and down. So just how far down is that snow going to make it? Will it make it to Lincoln? Maybe. By Sunday, but early, early, early Sunday morning? Definitely a possibility. So let's go in model three. This one has a little more, like, I mean, look at Shattern and Gordon, three to eight inches. I mean, they did just have a, quite a bit of snow not too long ago, like a week ago. So it's not unheard of, could happen. But it, this also has that trajectory like that it just it doesn't have as far of a dip down towards the Lincoln area even though it, it is showing point one thanks a lot model number three how about model number four eh, interesting I mean it still has that dip as it going all the way down there but the heavier snow has a pocket right there and then this over here half an inch to a couple of inches but this has it going across Interstate 80, across Interstate 80 with about a quarter of an inch of snow. Okay, model number four. Model number five, a little more horizontal, a little more zonal, but still has that dip up and then down and then up and then down. This one is a little more squished. But again, it has generally an inch or less, some spots maybe a, a touch more. For model number five. Model number six. So that we had one similar to this. This one, so a couple of different models are showing 
this area right here is kind of a hot spot and also over here. So the Panhandle in Northeast Nebraska probably has something to do with this, how that works. But that could be, I mean, that's, you're looking at two to four inches right in there. Okay, well, let's zoom out a little bit. This is the graph, North American 4K. That's very, just what we were looking at. Look at Mitchell, South Dakota, Corn Palace. Those familiar on I-90. It's, it's a cool place you should visit. Uh, anyway, um, so it has, you know, does this. And it has the higher amounts there and there. Solid snowfall for the, the Rockies. That's good to see. GFS, basically the same thing, um, just more smoothed out, not as much snowfall. You're looking at one to two for most. And then let's see, I think I have the NAM in here, yeah. And that's, I mean, so almost every single model is in consensus with each other saying, yeah, you're gonna do this. You're gonna have a spot here, a spot here, and then most of this will be rain. Hey, that's a smiley face. <laughs> All right, so let's go over to the severe weather now and kind of take a look at that. There we go. Okay, so you can see this. We've got the low pressure here, and then this goes like this and up and around like that. So that's what we're looking at there. And this area right here is where those storms are going to fire. So there they start, and there that is. So this is the area right here that's going to be severe. Some of this could be, but it's this right here that is going to be, well, pretty severe. Then it moves off into Illinois, uh, tries to get towards Kentucky. This is 1 a.m. Uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, Illinois, southeast Missouri, up towards Wisconsin. I mean, some of this, some of this severe weather. Well, here's, here's who has the threat for severe weather. It's bullseye over St. Louis. So you go from the boot heel of Missouri up into the very southeastern corner of Iowa, a good chunk of Illinois and eastern Missouri. This is moderate. We don't see a lot of moderates and it's almost rare to to have it in March. I mean it can it can happen but not this far north is that doesn't happen very often. Now on Saturday it'll be down here in this area but for Friday I mean that's and then this is a lot of real estate to have a tornado threat this big. Now what we're looking at here are these hash marks that means somewhere in here has a, about a 10% chance. And that's, I know that doesn't sound high, but it's, it's a good chance that someone is going to see an EF2 or bigger tornado in this area somewhere. That's what those little hash marks mean. And it's a 10% overall, and then a 10% or even a little bit higher for it to be a big tornado, a, a damaging tornado. So that's unfortunate. Uh, large hail, also that hash mark, that means two inches in diameter or bigger. Uh, in the hash marks and the highest potential is in, again bullseye over st louis and then damaging wind basically that same area but it is a large area of hash marks here and this means 75 mile per hour wind is a possibility in that area that what i just circled right there and the highest potential is right here in that pink 45 percent that's right there so damaging wind is most likely out of all of this uh, hail is hail and tornadoes are like a close second um, so it's it's going to be a day it really is so stay safe if you uh, if you have a plan that's all you need I mean know where to go what to do uh, that's my alarm telling me it's time to time to wrap it up but have a plan know where to go if uh, if you're in the line of these storms that's the best way to stay safe so see you next time